Ladies and gentlemen, I'm back. I know, thank you, thank you. Most of you probably didn't even realize that I missed the past couple of days worth of uploads, but for those of you who did, I'm back home. I decided to fly off to London for a few days to, you know, sip some tea and soak in the horrible, like, two degree weather. No joke, I actually forgot to pack any warm clothes, so I basically spent two days walking around London in a t-shirt and flip-flops getting weird looks from everyone who walked by. They, they, I think they knew I was an Australian person. Definitely I was a tourist. I also went over to play a cool unreleased game that I can't talk about yet, but I can show you in a couple of weeks from now. I just have to wait a couple of weeks apparently before I can, you know, show all the cool things. I'd love to tell you about it right now, but a lot of scary NDAs were signed and I'd be doomed if I told you what it was. But that's not what we're talking about today, because today I wanted to talk a little bit about TF2 matchmaking. Now, I know not all of you kind of follow the whole TF2 development cycle thing, so if you don't know what matchmaking is, it is effectively ranked play for TF2, where you get placed in matches with players of similar skill and then play competitively to increase your rank. It's nothing complicated, it's just a rank play system like you see in CSGO and pretty much every other shooter these days. Now, having this type of thing in TF2 will be great for so many reasons. The main one being is that people play TF2 for a whole ton of different reasons. For some people, like me, it's just a place to kind of have some fun, mess around with strange weapons and have fun with friends. For others, it's all about winning and trying their hardest to come out on top each game. And then there are those who just like to sit in corners eating sandwiches. And TF2 matchmaking is going to be exactly what that second group of people is looking for, because there is nothing worse than going into a TF2 match trying your absolute hardest to win a round and then turning around and seeing that half your team is AFK and spawn and the rest of them are just sitting over shouting Puta Spencer here all while you're trying your hardest to cap the card and TF2 matchmaking is exactly what those players are looking for. Now, the TF2 development team have been promising this feature for years, and now, over the past few weeks, it has finally gone into a closed beta. Currently, there are two ways you can play. Number one, if you join the matchmaking Steam group, you can periodically get access to the mode when they run a stress test, which they seem to be doing once or twice a week. The second way you can get in is with a matchmaking beta pass, which will give you unlimited access to the mode. Now, I was lucky enough to get my hands on one of these passes, so today, I want to show you guys the new matchmaking mode and chat a little bit about it because there are a lot of really good things and also some stuff that I'd like to see changed. And if this mode is made right, it has the potential to become a huge part of TF2. So first up, let's look at actually getting into a game. And the funny thing is, it's actually hard to comment on the actual matchmaking part of matchmaking at the moment, because the whole system is still in beta. And when they're doing stress tests, there's always the problem of having too many players and too few servers, which means there are always super long queue times. And then when the stress tests are down and only the people with competitive matchmaking passes have access, you get the exact opposite problem of too few players and too many servers. So either way, it's quite hard to judge queue times at the moment because there'll be nothing like this when the full mode is actually released. Now, let's get into the match. When you first join, everyone has the chance to run around the map freely until all players ready up or the full countdown ends, just like in MVM. You then get this pretty sexy new round start animation before the game begins. I'd personally like to see 5 seconds of freeze time at the start of each round just so everyone gets oriented, but otherwise the start of each game is great. Now, let's take a look at one of the biggest talking points for TF2 matchmaking so far, which has been class limits, which basically asks, should teams be allowed to run around with five scouts and a quick fix medic, or should, like in most competitive formats, there only be a limited number of each class allowed on each team? Most people that I've kind of seen talking about this at the moment really seem to be arguing in favor of putting class limits on this mode, effectively stopping people from running those like annoying six heavy cheese strategies that might make the game a little bit frustrating to play. Now, my opinion on this is a little bit different because I, I think the thing that we've really got to remember at the end of the day is that the whole point of adding TF2 matchmaking into the game is to make competitive accessible to your everyday TF2 player. And the more kind of rules and special modes and restrictions that they actually place on the competitive matchmaking mode, then the harder it's going to be for a newbie player with no experience to come in and 
really enjoy playing this type of game. And although not having class restrictions might end up with some teams running those really kind of dumb cheese strategies, at the end of the day, there is always a way to counter what the other team is doing. That's one of the things that makes TF2 so great. And also, by not restricting what kind of classes each team can run, it might actually kind of inject a lot of really cool diversity into the TF26's metagame, which right now is, is just become a really stale two scout, two soldier, demo man, and a medic kind of setup that you see in each and every competitive match. And I personally think it would be kind of fun to see what kind of awesome new strategies end up developing from not having class restrictions. Now, when it comes to weapon restrictions, I'm a little bit less certain. I'm really kind of torn on this topic. There are definitely quite a few weapons which are undoubtedly overpowered and could lead to some really frustrating moments in a competitive match. For example, a Criticola Scout almost one-shotting your medic. However, I think the better way to handle this would be making real balance changes to weapons, rather than just banning them from competitive entirely. Having weapon restrictions is really just going to make a mode which is already quite complex and confusing to most players, even harder to understand. Unfortunately though, this kind of thing is easier said than done, because as a lot of you probably know, weapon balancing isn't equal across public and competitive games. Take the Quick Fix for example. It's a great medigun in pub games and definitely a strong choice for most medics, but it's also not overpowered. Compare that to competitive where the quick fix is horribly broken and really created a lot of issues in the seasons where it was usable. Now, how can Valve resolve that type of problem without making it either horribly overpowered or underpowered in one of the two formats? I'm not sure, but I don't think that weapon banning is the solution. Now, next up, let's look at the ranking system, because right now there are 14 ranks in total. For every game you win, you'll gain XP towards moving up a rank, and when you lose, you'll get one step closer to moving down a rank. It's a pretty standard ELO rating system, and it obviously works well for pretty much every game like this. What's missing at the moment is rank calibration. In CSGO, you'll play approximately 20 full matches when you first start playing the game, and after that, you'll be assigned a rank based on your performance. Some players might get assigned a rank 1, and others rank 10. It just depends on their performance in those first 20 matches. In TF2 matchmaking, every player starts at rank 1, and has to grind their way up from there. This presents a whole lot of problems, as less skilled players at lower ranks are constantly going to get matched up with better players who are going through their first few games of competitive matchmaking, and then on the flip side, the highest skilled players are going to get frustrated because they're constantly going to have to deal with beginners who are playing at those lower ranks. Everyone loses in this type of scenario, and I'd really love to see a proper calibration system added into the game. There is a possibility, however, that this is already planned and it just hasn't been included during the beta. Now, finally, when the match wraps up, you get this pretty awesome winner's podium with all the losers standing beneath them. And then during this part, both teams can actually scribble all over the screen. And that's something I'd personally like removed, but maybe that's just because I hate fun. And then after all this, there is a scoreboard which awards medals to each player depending on their performance. And that is the TF2 competitive matchmaking beta. I think I covered pretty much all the points that were important to me. I'd also like to see some smaller changes, like removing CTF as a game mode, because I really don't think it works that well, and just generally reducing the map rotation a bit, because I think right now it would be much better if they cut out a lot of the maps and just had a much smaller pool of maps that are really well geared towards competitive play. But these are just my thoughts, guys. I would love to know what you guys think down in the comment section below, and that's pretty much it for now. The one big problem that a lot of you, I'm sure, are experiencing is that obviously, the matchmaking beta is very hard to play at the moment. You either have to be one of the lucky people with a matchmaking pass, or you have to be playing TF2 at the right time when one of the stress tests appear. But if you want to get into doing some competitive games right now without the competitive matchmaking beta, there are local TF2 leagues in pretty much every country all over the world. I know there's a new season starting in Australia right now that's pretty much open to everyone, no matter what your skill level is. So I'll put some links to that down below. And if you're not 
not in Australia and you're in one of the other countries, I can almost guarantee there will be a local competitive TF2 league that you can jump into. And a lot of them are really, really welcoming towards new players. I'll try and put as many links as I can for that kind of stuff down in the description. But a lot of the time, a quick Google search will give you exactly what you need. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And I will see you, Legends, in the next one. Bye-bye.